Hi everyone, in this video we are going to cover the process for application or renewal of uh, US B1 or B2 visa and uh, what we will cover in this video is what are the requirements first for the B1, B2 visa, what it is and you know how to apply then we are going to talk about all the steps in detail how to fill your DS-160, how to make the payment, how to take your visa appointment then how to finally receive your visa and I will share some uh, of my personal experience with this uh, visa application because I have applied it for myself so, so let's begin. So um, what we are going to cover in this video is these are all the steps. So, you know, first know your visa type, what kind of visa do you want to apply, complete your application, pay your visa fees, uh, schedule your appointment, attend your interview and track your passport. So all of these steps we are going to cover in this video in detail at deep length. Uh, so first of all, what is a business or B1, B2 visa? So any foreign citizen of a country who wants to visit the US, they need to apply for a business visa. These are non-immigrant visas. Immigrant visa is somewhere where you plan to move into US for a longer term and those categories are F visas, H visas, L visas. But this is not what we are going to talk about. So if you are visiting uh, temporarily, uh, that is what we are going to uh, talk about in this video. So that is what B1 and B2 is. Uh, you know, uh, B1 is business and B2 is tourism and they can be uh, applied together usually, which is a combination for both the purposes B1 and B2. Uh, then we are going to cover about the second step, uh, you know, how to apply. So first step is you have to complete your DS-160 form. Then you have to pay the visa application fee. Once you've paid the fees, you can schedule your appointment and then you have to visit the uh, embassy for a visa appointment. In case visa uh, waiver is applicable for you, then you do not need to visit the embassy. You just need to drop box your uh, documents and all of these steps is now what we are going to cover in detail. So um, qualification, so uh, for B1, B2 visa, it is usually considered the US government considers it for a temporary visit, which means that for a business player medical treatment, you do not intend to migrate to US permanently is what the basic idea is. It is for a limited period of time and you should show that you have enough funds to cover your expenses while you are in the uh, US, which means in your home country, you have sufficient funds and you'll return back to your uh, home country. You will not illegally migrate to US using uh, B1 visa as a medium. Um, how and, you know, uh, some of the foreign nationals may be ineligible for this visa and that you can uh, read through this link that is here on this website, US Travel Docs. Um, so, so that also you can look through. What are the application items again? So uh, first is an electronic DS-160 form that is a mandate that you need to fill. You should have a passport that at least has six months validity for the, you know, beyond the intended period of stay, which means if you're going to be, uh, let's say in the US in the period of May, then you should have your passport until, you know, November or until the end of the year. Then you'll need a photograph, uh, you know, when you visit for the appointment. And then once you make the payment, you need to have a receipt of the payment. Uh, and we'll cover all of this in detail. I'm just letting you know at a high level for now. Uh, you Once you schedule your interview, you will need to take a printout of your interview appointment data. That also we'll cover. Uh, but these are the application items that you'll need once you go for the visa interview or when you go for the Dropbox or visa. Uh, in you, you might want to bring some supporting documents and those supporting documents are listed here. Supporting documents are not mandatory, but you should ideally usually carry them because they are generally asked. So for example, your current proof of income, your bank statements, uh, you know, uh, you, you, your, your tax payments uh, that, that you've made, your ITR forms, you could take them to show that you are from India and you'll plan to stay in India and you do not plan to intend to immigrate to US. Your travel itinerary, you might, it is not mandatory. Uh, uh, a letter from the employer, that is something that you will need, which is called an invite letter and a cover letter, which your employer will give you if you're applying for a business visa. Uh, then if you are students, then you could bring in your uh, degrees, transcripts, results, you know, uh, some bank statements or any other evidence that show that you are a student. If you're a working adult, that is important that you need to get an employment letter or invitation letter or a cover letter from, uh, you know, from from your employer. Uh, you, you can carry your pay slips from last three months to show that you are employed with that company and that you have sufficient funds. If you're a business or a company director, then you have to bring the evidence of your position in the company and remuneration. And if you are visiting a relative, then you should bring that relative uh, 
proof of status for example if they have a green card holder or a valid visa you should bring that and they can also send you an invite letter in case if you're planning to apply for a uh, tourist visa so uh, moving on we've covered the instructions or prerequisites for the visa application now we will cover in detail how to apply for the visa so first of all you have to visit this website ceac state gov and that is where you can start applying for your ds160 which is the first step uh, so that is what it says the first step is uh, ds filling this ds160 form online and it would take approximately 90 minutes if you watch this video probably you can do it a little earlier because all your doubts hopefully would have been clarified so but at least you might need around 60 minutes to fill the entire application depending on uh, what, what sections of the application are applicable to you uh, this can be accessed easily using Chrome, Edge, or Firefox. So if you're using any other uh, browser, this might not work correctly. So prefer to use these browsers only. Uh, so what you have to do is to start your application, select the location where you will be applying from. Um, and uh, so th these are all the locations. So I'm applying from India, New Delhi. So I've just chosen India, New Delhi as my uh, location and then enter the security code and then click on start an application. Uh, after choosing your location and code, you can start the application. As soon as you click start the application, you will get this uh, uh, you know, note about computer fraud and abuse that you're not doing anything uh, illegal and you know they they are not uh, they'll not use this information for or, you know uh, anything else uh, except for this visa so uh, you you can click on i agree button and you click on next that is when it will uh, you know generate this application id that you should store in a safe and secure place just because while you are in the middle of an application and if you want to restart this application you can note this application number um, and this is very important and uh, you know you can also print this application id that will generate a pdf that you can save on your uh, computer or laptop and uh, that, that you can use this to retrieve your application anytime in point after this point uh, choose a security question uh, which is given below to retrieve it after the confirmation page and uh, uh, you know after you do this obviously this is just the first step the next step is you have to go to the uh, internet page of the embassy where you plan to apply for visa to know the next steps we will cover that in detail in this video as well uh, please note that if you started your application you should complete it within 30 to 60 days because if you do not do it this uh, application will expire and you'll have to restart the entire process again which is submitting a new application so uh, ju just to avoid rework you you should complete it within 30 to 60 days of when you start doing this application now you can choose your security question and you can choose the security answer and then you can click on continue these are all the other security questions feel free to choose any and then click on uh, continue this is what I was saying. If you click that print application, you can save this application as PDF on your system to save this application number. Okay, as soon as you click next, you will be brought to personal information. So what you have to give is your surname and given name as it is in your passport. What you should note is that in case in some countries, sometimes given names is not given, the entire name is in surname. So you don't have to leave it blank or you, you know, you have to type FNU, that is the guidance. So in case you don't do this, you might have to refill your entire application once you visit for visa application. So make sure your surname and given name is exactly as it is listed in your uh, passport and full name in your native alphabet. If it is there, you can, if not, you can uh, leave it. Have you ever been known by any other's name? I have not been. If you have any other names that are on your legal documents, then you should click yes and uh, you, you, you can put your other names that you've used in the past. Then after that, uh, do you have a telecode that represents your name? You know, these are the guidance usually that are given. You know, these are some uh, specific characters applicable to uh, some specific country. So if this is not applicable, you should write no. If it is applicable, you should give your four digit code number that is your telecode number. It will ask for your sex, your marital status, your uh, date and place of birth. So all of that you can apply. Give attention to the state or province. You know, if it is in your passport, you should enter your state. If not, you can click on uh, do not uh, apply as well. So um, now after that, 
you filled your personal information what you could do is my recommendation is you keep continue to save this application so that you don't lose your uh, information that you've entered so far otherwise you'll have to refill all that information so uh, or you could if you're filling it in one go you should click on uh, next which is personal but even if sometimes the page remains stale for a few minutes then you'll have to refill all the information you know even if you retrieve the application that page you'll have to refill so you can click either save or click on next if you click save uh, then it will say that your application has been saved to the database and within the next 30 days you can uh, retrieve your application so after you've done save you can again click on continue application then it will bring you to the uh, next page so this is in case if you uh, want to have exited you took a break and then you want to re retrieve your applications you just again choose the location and code as it is shown here and then you click on this retrieve application and then you have to give your application id and then you have to click on retrieve application and then it will ask for your uh, security question your name surname date of birth and the security question that you had put so after you've done that you can click on retrieve application and once you do it will bring you back to the page that you were filling up last time so this is now it brings you to personal information too so what is the country or region of your region in my case it is india you can choose your country have you held nationality answers those questions as are applicable to you it is no for me are you resident of any other country so answers that question so um, national identification number now this is where some people will get confused what this is so uh, this is not a dhar number some people might go ahead and put a dhar number you can still go ahead and put a dhar number it does not harm but usual guidance is that this is usually uh, what the uh, us government uh, provides uh, so so you know they provide a national identification number so uh, you know you can put your dhar number but you can skip and you can click on does not apply also if you do not wish to provide your dhar number uh, so social security number is something if you had stayed in us earlier on a, a h1 l1 or f visa whatever other class of visa uh, then you can put your social security number the confusion here is that even though you were an immigrant visa now you're applying for a non-immigrant b1 visa should i mention ssn or no if you ever have been in the us and you were issued a us social security number please make sure that you enter it for sure uh, the U.S. taxpayer ID number is for somebody who has stayed in U.S. but was does not have a social security number. They have a tax identification number. So it's either SSN or tax identification number. So, uh, you know, make sure you fill either of these. For example, a spouse of a person who was on a H-1 visa would have a tax identification uh, number. So you have to put either of these and or you can click on do not apply if these do not apply to you at all. Uh, so uh, next you have to click on travel or you can click on save now it will ask what is the purpose of your visa uh, you know uh, which is temporary uh, business uh, visa right so this is not a permanent visa you do not intend to immigrate or move to us and then what you have to choose is uh, you know if you're applying for a combination of b1 b2 which is usually what it is done if you're applying for a business or if you're going for uh, you know uh, pleasure you could choose uh, either b1 or b2 but usually if you uh, do b1 b2 you could be granted a multiple entry b1 b2 visa depending upon your purpose if you do not wish to travel for business your purpose is only tourism you may choose b2 only but the process will remain the same so um, next it will ask you is have you do you have any specific travel plans if you have if you have already booked your tickets you and all then you can click yes if not then you have to put your estimated date if you're unsure of your travel plans it is okay to put you know that i'll be in the us for two weeks or three weeks which is for a business uh, reason right so two to four weeks six weeks is uh, what you you'll usually say um, uh, even though the maximum is six months but usually people travel for uh, a few weeks and you you can put your estimated date of arrival in the us and estimated length of stay uh, there, ideally there are no actual tickets needed but in case you have travel plans then you can give your actual uh, details also then uh, address where you will stay in us again you do not need to book a hotel exactly you can put look for a hotel which is nearby your area where you will be staying and you can put uh, those details where you intend to make the booking or otherwise if you have already booked you can book you know uh, enter that hotel as well so who is paying for your trip it could be you yourself or your employer in my case if i'm applying for a b1 business visa uh, then i've mentioned present employer but you can choose whatever is applicable to you
once you filled all the uh, information click on next or click on save and uh, then it will ask you are there any other persons traveling with you if no if you're traveling alone then it will you know ask you to proceed but in case you entered yes then it will ask you uh, whether you're traveling as a part of group or organization and if you're traveling with other people you know this is the uh, guidance that is there so you should give the names of individuals for example you're traveling in a family or you're traveling in a group or you know you're traveling for business and other people are traveling on other visas with you uh, uh, then you can give the names of those people that are traveling with you so uh, if you're traveling with a group, what is the name of the group is what it will ask you. Uh, if uh, So I, uh, you know, uh, you can choose yes or no, however is applicable to you. Then it will ask you about your US travel information that you've traveled to US in the past if you have. So for me, I have been in the US, for example, if it's no, you can simply choose no. But if you have, then it will ask you were you issued a US visa. Now you might be issued different US visas in the past like um, H visa, L visa, you, I mean immigrant or non-immigrant visas. But here, since you are applying for a non-immigrant visa, the details that you have to enter is for the uh, business visa that you've been issued in the past. The non-immigrant visa details will be asked later. Oh, sorry, immigrant visa details will be asked later. So, you, for example, you can give details of all the previous US B1 visa visas. For example, if you're applying for a renewal and you have renewed it two or three times, you have to enter all the details of B1 visa, when did was the last visa issued? It's on the visa. And what is the visa number on the right hand side of the visa? There's this visa number. Uh, just in case you've lost it and you do not know, then you can click on do not know, but uh, you're expected to give your uh, previous visa details. And then it will ask you whether you're applying for the same type of visa. So if you had applied for B1, B2 last time and you're renewing in the same category, you can choose yes. Uh, otherwise you can choose no and give the uh, appropriate answers. Uh, then are you applying from the same country? For example, I applied from India this time. Next time I am applying for from, let's say, Singapore, if I'm staying in Singapore. So that is what it is asking you. Uh, you know, uh, you can choose the answer accordingly. Have you been 10 printed? 10 printed means whether you've provided fingerprints at the US embassy in the past or no. Choose accordingly if you have ever been. Uh, uh, has your visa been lost or stored and has your visa been cancelled uh, appropriately answer that have you been refused an entry into the US or has anybody filed an immigrant petition on your behalf this is important so if you travel to US on other visas like H, L, F or any other kind of visa as an immigrant this is where you should enter that information this is the immigrant visa where you have stayed permanently which means you were not there in the US temporarily you were on a work visa or you know you were or staying there in the US for business so this is what this is so this is what you can mention that i was issued a h1b visa in the past and you can also enter your visa number i have not put the visa number here but you can find out that from your visa and you can put that here as well next again save or move to the next so uh, give your home address this is very important to give your accurate address because the visa will come delivered to this so uh, put all your uh, current address and then permanent address and then it will ask you is your mailing address same as your home address in case it is different then enter both differently otherwise you can choose yes it is same as my mailing address make sure you enter your correct phone number so that in case they have to inform you or text you anything uh, those are uh, those, those come to you work number is not mandatory if you're applying for business many of you will think should i give my hr's number or my company's generic number you can also click on does not apply but if you have your company's generic center reception number you might want to give that as well but it is not mandatory um, then uh, have you ever used any other phone numbers in the last five years if you have yes then you might have to give those numbers if not that is okay uh, then you can give your email address again your email address should be uh, whatever email address you regularly use and you get notified so that any updates related to your application your rescheduling or anything come to that email have you ever used any other email addresses if you have multiple addresses you can choose no uh, here as well because this is the primary email where you intend all your uh, communication to be so it is okay to give only one email address but if you have multiple email addresses and if you want to give others you can click on yes and give those as well now this is something that probably is recently added and that is new and uh, so that is about social media presence if you have a social media presence uh, then you have to choose your platform and give all this information now you will be surprised whether should i give i'm on facebook i'm on instagram and google should i give all i think it is 
up to you i choose to give my linkedin uh, media uh, availability if you want to give your facebook insta or any other that also you may give so uh, you know uh, once you choose the platform you can give your link address to your particular profile and you can add continue to add other for other social media platforms then uh, is there any other websites for example you create videos or content on instagram or youtube and if you want to give that information because that might be relevant if you are going to in the us for any of these content creation works so you should give that as yes uh, if not you can click on simply no then you move on to the next you have to give your passport information if it's a regular or diplomatic passport give your passport number you know is this a passport book number so this is what it is mentioned about the passport book number so those who have a passport book number instead of a passport you can enter the uh, you know control number that is on the passport book and then you know uh, who has issued this uh, passport and then which city and state state if it is shown on the passport you should mention that if it, if it is not you can skip that then you know it will ask you for your issuance date expiration date of your uh, passport just in case it does not expire in some kind of passport you can choose no expiration and have you ever lost or stolen a passport answer all those questions and then click on us contact so uh, so now that you are visiting us it ask you who are you visiting if you are visiting a relative you should give that relatives number if you are visiting for uh, business reasons you can give your managers or hrs or somebody's contact in the us if not if you are going on tourism tourism it is okay to give hotel address or hotel managers uh, name and address also and if you do not know their organization for example you are visiting a relative and you do not know what company do they work for or you do not want to inform because that is not relevant you can click on do not know as well this is only information so that you know in case uh, somebody needs to verify you or they need to reach out to somebody they can reach out to this person then you can choose what is the relationship to you is it a relative is it a business associate so if your employer is sending you even then you can choose a business associate or other uh, and you can give that contact person's name email id and address you know uh, this is what you can give hotel details or business partner's email then give the address so the address can be actual business address or, or of your employer where your manager in the us works or if you are going to stay in a hotel you can enter the hotel details zip code address email id as well uh, if you do not have their email id that is okay to click on uh, does not apply and give whatever information you have next click on and go to providing the family information which is your relative so the first one is about your father give the uh, you know uh, full name and date of birth for your parents point to note here is sometimes in parents passports entire name is given in given name or surname so make sure it is also as per their passport it is not going to get validated anywhere but just in case of any inquiry or additional information it is best that you pay attention to this and give information as it is in their uh, passport uh, so then it asks you whether your father is in the us choose your answer appropriately and give additional answers that follow with a yes then it will also ask you for your mother's name same details uh, name date of birth mother in the us then it will ask you whether you have any other immediate relatives who are not your parents in the us so for example if you have a sibling brother or sister who is a permanent resident then you can give their details as well so and if you have more you can click on add another and uh, continue giving those details um uh, then it will ask you for your further family information which is your spouse you can give your spouse name country place of birth similarly uh, you know spouse address is it the same as your home address give all that information and then uh, go to the next which is your education so uh, choose your primary occupation you know you could be a doctor lawyer whatever is applicable to you and if you are working with a uh, private mnc that is what i mentioned other and private employment with multinational company feel free to choose from the list of uh, drop downs here then you have to choose your present employer name who is sending your who is applying for your uh, b1 visa you uh, you know if you are applying from india you have to give your current india's employer's name not the uh, entity in us who you are visiting for business purposes and then you have to enter your uh, address here uh, current address you can answer and the, uh, and then since when did you start working and then you have to give your monthly income in the um, uh, local currency so, um, so so this is what you should pay 
attention to this is your monthly income and not your uh, annual income and this is in local currency so if you're applying from india for example this is in inr you do not have to convert it to uh, us dollars and you have to completely uh, briefly describe your role whatever you do in your job you might be a consultant a business uh, you know manager a people manager or individual contributors whatever you do briefly describe your uh, duties that that help them understand what is your role and what what do you do uh then once you go next it will ask you whether you were previously employed uh, you know you can give some of the previous information of your employer what was the employer's name and what was the previous employer's address you know manager's name when were you employed from and similarly you know uh, what were you uh, your your duties in your previous uh, job uh, they they do this, this is not usually verified but just it is good to know for them that you previously worked with other companies as well you can add another if you have multiple previous employments uh, then you know it asks you for your educational institutions you can put your highest level of education or you may put your uh, you know college and mba and degrees as well so uh, you know that is what you should put here what is the name of institution their address what is your course and when did you attend it from so try to be as uh, accurate as you can so if you do not remember the exact date they can be closer estimates to when you uh, actually uh, you know uh, studied these then if you want to add multiple you could and then if it starts asking you whether you belong some additional work education or training information do you belong to a clan or a tribe answer appropriately and then what are the other languages that you know continue clicking on add another for multiple languages that you might uh, know um list of countries visited so even if you visited usa in the past you should mention usa and then click on add another and add any other countries that you uh, visited in the last 5 years and then it will ask you another lot of few other questions that you can look through and answer whether you have any drills so, uh, you know skills served in the military member of any uh, parliamentary unit you can answer uh, choose those answers now uh, these are the security questions uh, part 1 to 5 that you should go through and you should answer all of those for example uh, do you have any physical disorders are you a drug abuser you know uh, like choose appropriate answers and move to background check part 2 similarly it is related to any convictions that you have uh, in the past uh, click on save or next uh, then you know security background check 3 uh, then again do you tend to engage in any terrorist activities or do you support any such so you're giving your declaration that you know no you're not engage in any such activities and then you click on next security background 4 then uh, this is have you ever been removed or you know from the us or anything so all of that information related to security check you can put and then uh, move to the uh, next so your ts160 is almost complete you can go to you know save or next which is review all the information that you have input now point to note here is that you are in the review tab and you've completed your data entry for your you know ds160 that you had to do uh, you know you do not need to upload any photo photo will be taken at the time of when you uh, you know go for the appointment but you might want to take the Photo, some photos with you as per the US specification in case they ask you over there you can print this entire application while reviewing you will not get this chance to print this later so if you print this you can save this entire review information in your pdf and in, in case you have to refer it or uh, but this print is not needed to be taken for the appointment this is only for your reference so you, uh, once you reviewed the entire information click on location so uh, you know this location information will come from where you are applying for this visa so it, for me it is showing as new delhi and then once you reviewed everything so just click on next which is sign and submit you do not have to actually physically sign an application it is an electronic signature only so this is what it is that you know your application is now ready to be submitted you can uh, you know uh, additional information might be needed later but right now they you know clarified this uh, preliminary information from you when you go for a visa interview they might ask you for additional information you are electronically signing this uh, application and this does not guarantee or this does not entitle you to enter in the us uh, you know in case at the time of port of entry or uh, during the visa interview they want to have some additional information want to do any digital uh, medical examination or or you know uh, some other information may be needed uh, they they ask you for that but please make sure that you have reviewed this information in totality because after this 
you will not be able to make changes and you will only have to start a new application if you uh, if you make any mistakes so so make sure you reviewed it and then you click on next so once you do, uh, then they'll ask you whether anyone assist you in filling this application. If somebody, your parent or somebody or your friend or colleague is uh, helping you while sitting with you, you're asking them questions, you can still click no. But if you want to, if you have used outsourced services, you've not filled this entire application yourself, if you've used an agent, ideally you could choose yes and fill the agent's details as well. So this is how you have to e-sign. You just have to enter your passport number, enter the code, and then uh, it will ask you to sign and submit this application. And once you do, it will show you that you've successfully signed and submitted your application. Now you cannot make any changes. And you, know, you have to go to next as a confirmation to complete this application. Once you do, it will give you a confirmation that your DS-160 is complete and, you know, this is your application numbers. You have to print this. You can either print this page from directly from here. You can print the entire application or you can just email the confirmation to you. So this will come into email. But this is a printout that you should take with you and it will give you details of, you know, your name, your, you know, confirmation number and the visa that you are applying for and where you are applying. Uh, the next step is go to the internet page of uh, the embassy or consulate where you want to apply you, if you are in this website you know you can click and you can read any other uh, you know restrictions that are instructions that are applicable to you uh, for your respective country but uh, you know I, I am going to cover uh, from an India perspective you know that you are applying from India the next step now that you filled your uh, DS-160 the next step is to make the payment and schedule your actual appointment so now when you go to this website CGI Federal Secure uh, then you have to first register as a new user if you've not registered in the past if you have ex your uh, login details then you can enter your email password and login already but if not you click on new user and then you choose the country for visa this is not United States this is the country where you will be applying from a US visa so you have to choose the country from where you're applying your visa in my case it is India uh, and then give all this information, name, password, and, you know, check box on this uh, privacy policy, enter this security code and click on submit. So your new user is uh, created. And then what you have to do is with that new user, uh, you have to email ID and password. You have to now uh, log into this page. Now, once you log in, it will bring you to this page and it will you what it is saying is that in you have to make sure that uh, the information that you're filling in this application is same as your passport and as you filled on DS-160. In case if there is any mismatch in any of these, your application might uh, go on a hold or might need additional information. So what you can do is you can go to update profile also and you know look at your information that is saved here. Uh, what it is saying is that the fees that you will pay, it is not refundable to so make sure you are following the correct process. You have to make sure you provide your contact numbers that are correct and email ID is correct so that they can reach out to you in case if there is any confusion. Uh, you can carry a photograph as per the US visa specification uh, for minors who are 14 years of age while visiting the uh, visa application. Each application is independent. Even if you're applying as a family or as a group, you have to apply. Each of you have to apply separately for, your, uh, for the category of visa that is applicable to you. Uh, the some consulates in India offer a free pickup or submission services at the OFC and while collecting uh, some will need to pay rupees 650 uh, per individual so this amount is non-refundable uh, the visa fees as well as the submission and collection we'll cover in more detail uh, more details about this in the coming uh, section as well so then you click on new application and then once you click on new application, uh, this is how your entire dashboard looks like for now and you it, it is blank and I'll show you how this will come filled up later. So you click on new application and then you choose your kind of visa, which is, you know, non-immigration visa. Then you choose your state, at whatever state you are applying from. Then choose the language of interview, whatever language is available is shown here. You can choose English or whatever language is applicable to you. Uh, then you know uh, visa category that applies to you so uh, you have to choose business and tourism which is the one that is applicable we are applying here uh, this this same website is uh, applicable for other visas as well that is why you see them here but you have to choose business or tourism visa then you just have to review the information that you filled so far and then click on continue and then it will say choose your visa class which is b1 b2 visitor for business and pleasure 
uh, then what it will ask you is for all your uh, details that I was saying should be same as DS-160 or passport. So enter your passport number, issuance details, expiration date, date of birth, nationality, uh, then you know your first name, last name, DS-160 confirmation number. This is where the confirmation number is now going to tally with this application. So, uh, so the DS-160 application that you fill, enter that uh, number here along with all the other passport number details. Make sure your phone number, mobile number are matching as with your DS-160 and email ID as well. Do not use two different email IDs for filling DS-160 and this. Use the same email ID that you used for filling your DS-160. And, you know, uh, uh, this is what it says that, you know, your visa will be ready to be collected. And then, you know, I, I'll, I'll cover this address, mailing address part later as well. So uh, if you're adding any dependents, you are applying for a visa as a group or for a family. And if you want to add any dependents here, you can add them by uh, name here, you know, your spouse or your, uh, you know, uh, uh, your, your kids or anybody, you could take appointment for them along with yourself, even though DS-160 uh, will have to be filled separately. And that is, this is here where you'll have to uh, input their DS-160 separately. And you can enter all their passport related and first name, last name information, same as yourself but you can schedule an uh, interview for them together with yourself. Now then, uh, next you have to go to, uh, it will ask you these questions, whether are you under 14 years of age or are you 80 years of age or older? And then uh, do you have a previous B1, B2 visa? You know, answer yes or no, and if you uh, accordingly and click continue uh, proceeding. Then you see you filled all this information that you're applying for a non-immigrant visa from New Delhi and it is a business tourism B1, B2 visa. Now next you have to specify the document delivery that is after your visa, how do you want your document to be delivered to you? So uh, you can, once you, uh, you know, gone for the interview or dropped your documents, you can go track the status from this status tracker within this website. You can go to this link and track your uh, status and you should collect your passport within 14 working days uh, or, or within seven working days from blue dot locations otherwise it will go back to the embassy or consulate and then it will be delayed for you there is a pickup option as well at the you know depending on where which location you're applying for but i highly recommend that you choose for uh, you know premium home delivery option which is it you do, you know it will deliver your passport to you at a nominal fee you can give your address and they will deliver it to you at four rupees 650 in case you know you're staying very nearby to the passport application center then you might choose to pick up which is okay but if you're coming from far for this visa interview then i recommend that you just choose a uh, premium delivery and you pay in cash at the time of submission of documents and then one whenever the visa is ready it will just be delivered to your home uh, you know and you will be uh, getting a confirmation or a registered email id so make sure that is why that the address and phone number is uh, very important. Someone must be present at that address to collect that uh, passport and visa. Uh, if your postal code is not serviceable, then you can choose the premium pickup location and the fees of 650 rupees has to be paid for each applicant. It's not for a group. It's not that, you know, you'll pay 650 for three or four applicants. It's 650 for each of you whose uh, passport and visa you're applying for. Give your mailing address here as well. Make sure it is same as DS-160 and this is where your passport and visa will be delivered. Uh, once you've chosen that, click on continue. And then this is a pop-up that you will see uh, on, you know, visa fees. It will say that visa fees is uh, not refundable. And if you get into error, you know, you do not uh, want to pay. If your, fee, if your money was uh, deducted, you know, wait for some time. It will automatically start reflecting here if your payment is done. So... Uh, you know, just, just try to do it once and then wait for a day or two. So this is just a notification. This is just a note. Click on continue. And then once you do, uh, click here for all the payment options. So it will show you what are the payment options that you have. So you can choose any FT or you, if you want to go over the counter, you can visit any of these banks and then uh, you, you can make the fees payment as well. So these are, again, some fees payments that are on the ustraveldocs.com. So you can do any FT or cash at the uh, counter. So when you click on those, it will show you any FT details of, you know, what is the I, uh, IFSC code and what is the account number where you have to transfer. When you click on this, it will show you those details. So um, that is, uh, you know, when you click here for all payment options. Uh, so what you have to do is add, for example, you're choosing any FT, add that beneficiary in your bank account, make that payment of this amount, 
and uh, you know what you can do is enter your application number while you are uh, making the payment and uh, so, so, so what, what you should notice here is this receipt number right now is coming blank, right? So once next you have to go to the, uh, you know, uh, add the application number in payment comments when you're making the payment from your bank, you know, you can uh, add this application number and uh, make this payment. Uh, after one or two days, it will start reflecting here. So you see right now the receipt number is blank. Then once you log in after a day or two after you've made the payment. Uh, so uh, what it will say is you have one receipt that can be used for this transaction. So what they've done is your the payment that you've made from your bank, they've matched that with the DS application that they've received against your name. And you, you can enter the DS160 confirmation number in the comments when you're making the payment. That is when they will map it your receipt number here. So it will start showing you, you have one receipt and you can choose on click existing receipt. And then you see this receipt number that was showing as blank. It will now start showing that number. So once you see this number over here, uh, you know, click on continue. And then, you know, it will say, do you want to schedule the appointment? Enter this code and click submit. Then what it will show is the location that you've chosen in the drop down, and then it will start showing you the months you know going ahead that are applicable and then it will show you all the times that are available so from all the times available that whatever time is most suitable to you i prefer to choose the first slot so that you know you can be there early and uh, you know you can get free early as well you don't have to wait because others are getting late so choose this select this checkbox and uh, click on continue once you do you will get a notification on the website that your appointment has been scheduled you can either email or download or, you know, print this uh, application. And, uh, you know, this is how your application looks like that, you know, uh, this is your appointment confirmation and all your name, your address, time is shown here and that you've chosen for premium uh, document delivery. Uh, so this also shows your appointment time and document delivery information. It will be delivered to this address. It will also show your receipt number and uh, payment fees payment here. So in case you are applying for a business visa and you want to claim it uh, in in, uh, in in your company's portal, you can use this uh, confirmation for claiming this. Uh, please know that you cannot make payment via a corporate card because the only modes that are accepted are over the counter or uh, you know uh, NEFT. So in case you go to the bank and they may accept corporate card or credit card but otherwise not uh, so these are additional instructions that uh, you know you can uh, refer to so for visa interview waiver applicants uh, you know in case you already have a b1 visa or there are some other conditions you can read through the uh, website uh, you can choose for visa interview waiver which means you do not have to apply for a visa you'll only have to go and drop your documents there and what it says is that there are some places where there is a free or paid drop off location so in all of these locations that you see uh, the drop off is also free but in these locations if you are dropping off you might have to pay a fee but depending on where you are what is the nearest location you can choose your location accordingly uh, so this is what I'm showing here that you'll also receive this confirmation over your email. So uh, in case you forgot to print, you'll have this details in your email. Uh, then when you go back home, this is what your dashboard starts looking like. It will start showing you your visa information that you are applied for a B1, B2 visa. You've made the fees payment. You do not have any family members or if you have dependents, then when is your next appointment and how have you chosen your document delivery? You know, you've chosen your address. So it will start showing you on the dashboard if you see here now we've completed almost all of these steps so you know now you were applying for a b1 b2 visa you've completed your ds160 application you've paid your fees you've scheduled your appointment the next step is you know take all of these documents print out and you know take all your supporting documents along with to your visa interview and then track your passport for receipt and once you've attended your visa interview this is how your uh, business visa will come and this is how it will uh, look like so if you see this is granted with the uh, multiple entry visa and this will show all your details so uh, good luck hope this video helps thank you for watching